Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and today we're going to finally turn this shoe brush into a hedgehog. And I've been promising this for a couple of weeks, but I've been distracted by other projects. So I figured today we'll get down to business and make this into a hedgehog. I just wanted to show you that I got this along with all of these things here at a thrift store. They were all bagged together. These are actually vintage brushes. This one is marked 31 cents. And I had no idea what shoe brushes were made out of until just about a half an hour ago when I was Googling them. So these two here would be made out of horse hair, and then these ones would be made out of nylon bristles. I've never worked with shoe brushes before, and I've definitely never worked with horse hair, so this is going to be a first all the way around. And looking closer at them, they all seem to be constructed the same way. The nylon ones and the horse hair ones are all constructed with these little bundles that have been put together. I can see that they're longer hairs that have been bundled together and then folded up and there's a wire in between them that holds them into these holes. So what I have to do is just pull them out of that hole. They come out fairly easy. I just grab onto the base of that bundle and just pull up. So it looks like I have quite a bit of material there for future projects as well. I don't think I'll be using that much. So when I made that introduction I had no idea I was going to be making this many hedgehogs and I had no idea that I was going to be using different materials as well. So I did use this shoe brush, as you can see over there, and there's just a few bristles left because I ended up making four cute little hedgehogs out of them. And then I have another one over there I made with chip brushes, and I used three to make him, and one three inch and two two inch brushes. I also made a hedgehog out of an old paintbrush that I dug up out of the ground. So if you followed my mudlarking adventures at all, this was in a previous video called Mudlarking in Canada. And this has probably been sitting in the ground since 1950 or so. It's very rusty. And I know it doesn't look very much like a treasure. To me it was because I knew I could use the bristles in crafts. So I've already cleaned up the bristles once for making whiskers on a mouse. This time I cleaned them up and made a little hedgehog. He's a little bit more cartoony looking. But that's the joy of these. You can make them more cartoony looking or more realistic looking. It's up to you. If you don't have any bristles on hand, you can use yarn. So this guy was constructed the same way I made this guy, but I just used yarn instead of bristles, and they're glued in the exact same way. So depending on the look that you're going for, you have plenty of options. For the body, I use foil, masking tape, and paper towel. You can also use napkin. To attach the bristles, get a tacky glue. That's the best one for the job because it grabs on super fast, and that's what you need. Uh, for the rest of it, you can use just your basic white glue. A pair of pliers will come in handy, and all. And then for the eyes, you can do different things. For these ones, I added pins. These ones, I painted them in. And then you're going to need some basic acrylic paints. Uh, in this video, I used a brown, a black, a beige, and an off-white. These cute little guys also have some fur around them. So for that, you can use yarn or you can use fake fur. I've used both in this video. And for those things, you're going to need some scissors, of course. And to attach it, I use tacky glue. And now we can just get started making our hedgehog. So I'm excited to get started, guys. Let's go. And I thought it would be a good idea to see what they look like without the bristles. So I typed in, you can see there, I don't want to say that word because YouTube might have a problem with it. So a hedgehog without any fur. You can type in what you want to type in there. <laughs> Not the most cutest things. So they do need some bristles to make them more adorable. So I tried to copy that as much as possible, but could probably do a better job in the head area. Anyway. We'll see what that looks like. And I made a really tiny one here because I think for Radagast, he needs something smaller to be more realistic. So I'm doing a couple different sizes here. And again, you can make this any size you want. And I think I'll keep it more like this size here because it'll be easier to show you what I've done. Kind of shaped like a teardrop, I guess. So I'm just gonna throw a little bit of tape around that. Now I'm just going to add a bit for his nose. Just a piece I've folded over a couple times. I'll put it on the body and then I'll just shape out the nose part. Bring it to a point. Okay, so I just added some foil on top and it doesn't matter how you do this, guys. Um, this guy here I'd done in one shot. Just shape the body and then the, then the nose. It was really easy. This one took a little bit more. I just had to keep adding little bits here and there until I got the shape that I wanted. So it doesn't matter how you get it done as long as you get it done. For the ears, I didn't really do anything spectacular. Just kind of fold it over. We could do it again. Fold it over. And I'll just place it on there just like that. 
And I'm going to use my pliers. Yep, that'll work. Okay, I'm just going to place a piece of tape over top just to keep it in place for me. And I'll get another couple pieces ready. And I'll break them down so they're easier to work with. And now I'm just going to shape them with the pliers. So I just placed tape right on the front side and then I'm going to use my pliers to get it to stick inside. And there we go. So I'll just repeat the same process on the other side. So you can see the difference in shape. I've added a, a little bit of foil here just to give them a little bit more of a forehead. So if you left it like this, you could have yourself a little mouse body, which would be super cute. You just have to add a little tail and some fake fur and you got yourself a cute little mouse. But we are making hedgehogs, so let's stick to the plan. I'm just going to take a bit of foil and going to make a forehead. So I'm just going to roll it up so I have a little bit of, of uh, substance there to work with. And I'll just add it right in front of those ears. And it gives them somewhat of a forehead and a place where we can stick the eyes when we're ready to do that. And then we just tape it into place. And if you don't add enough the first time, just add a little bit more. It doesn't really matter how you do it, guys. Like I said, you can add little bits, add some tape, add a little bit more, add some more tape. It doesn't matter. As long as you get the shape that you want. All right, my friends, in the previous clips, you saw me shaping a body that would just give you a basic hedgehog like this. So nose in the front and your teardrop shape in the back and they're low to the ground. And then before I finished filming and this wasn't planned, I decided I wanted a partial rolled hedgehog. So I made a bigger one off camera because I've never made one before and I thought I would just try it out. So I decided to do it again but much smaller this time and I'm going to show you how I shape this. So his head's off the table, his back end's slightly raised off the table and he's got a flat bottom as well. So in the next few clips we're going to be shaping this little guy. Let's get started. The one thing I will say before we get started, the back of him is flat. And of course I've done that on purpose. I didn't add any bristles to the back because he's always going to be sitting in that position. So again, I'm going to be doing the same thing. So I'm just pushing the foil onto the table to give me that nice flat bottom. And I'm raising up this part. So this is where the head is going to go. I'm just getting the base to start with and then I can add to it. And this guy is going to be pretty tiny. And if you're wanting to make one of these, I would suggest going for something a little bit larger because it's a lot easier on yourself. Once you get the hang of how everything works, then you can, you know, go smaller. You know, and it'll just be easier for you to know what to expect when you're making a tiny one. So there I go. Looks kind of like a chair. Got the flat bottom and the back. Now I'm going to add pieces to the back here. There's this little back end there, and now I have to add a face. I'm just going to pull this back, and now I have room for a little nose. He's going to be so adorable, I can tell already. <laughs> Look at how tiny. I'm glad I decided to make one more here for you guys. Okay, I got to add some little ears. Just wondering for this little guy if I can just place on a blob of foil like this. And then shape that with my pliers. So I'm just going to tape that in. That works like a charm. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to add the legs now. And it'll be attaching it to this bigger guy right here. Working on details as tiny as this little guy would need. All you'll see is my fingers. So there's no point 
in that frustration. <laughs> so I'll show you how to add the legs to this guy. It's the exact same process that you would use to add legs to one of these characters here. So one of these flat bodies. So there will be no difference and I'll explain that as we go. So in the next clip we're going to be looking at this guy before he got his bristles attached. So let's get started. So I'm just going to take a little bit of foil. His legs aren't going to be that big, obviously. And I've left a little piece open here where I can use it to attach up here. I'm just pushing the leg inward because it was a little bit too long. I'll try that. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, and now I'll cover it in the masking tape. I'm just trying to thin it out a little bit. It's a bit too fat. And now we'll test it on there. Good. Okay, now I just have to tape that part in. And the tape also um, prepares the foil for the paper towel. You need the, the tape over top the foil to, to make it accept the uh, paper towel. But if you're wanting to add them now to these guys, then I would do the same thing as I just did here. So I'll just make a leg. You can make any shape that you want to make. They're just going to be so tiny, you don't need much detail, right? Um, if you wanted to add details, you could definitely do that. But for these guys, I'd probably do something a little bit fatter. Leave this part open, like, and I would have a little area here open where I could easily attach it. And then same thing, you just cover that in masking tape, and then you could place it on where you want the legs to go. Once you have all the parts that you want attached at this time, the next step is to add the skin. And the skin is the paper towel or the napkins, whatever you have on hand. And the paper is going to give you a paintable surface and it's also going to give you a surface that you can glue your bristles onto. So you do need to add the paper over top the masking tape. And to do that, I'm using, in this video, I'm using Elmer's Glue All. You don't have to use that brand. It's just what I had on hand today. Okay, and this stuff here is pretty runny on its own, so I don't have to do anything to it. I just brush it on as is. If I was going to be using a tacky glue, then I would want to add a little bit of water in there just to make it a little bit easier to work with. And that just goes by feel. There's no recipe to follow. Just pour a little bit of glue in a, in a bowl, and then you add a little bit of water and mix it up, and you'll, you'll feel it. It'll be easier to brush on once you add in a little bit of water. Once we've attached the skin to one of these guys, I'm going to pop back in with an edit, and I'll show you how I get the paper towel around those little arms. I just get a little pile here to work with, and some strips I'll make a lot smaller to like get over the ears and stuff. So I'll make a couple strips pretty tiny, and I'll set that aside. And if you have clamps, these binder clips work really well. So you can set it on the side. I stick a pin inside there. I have these long corsage pins. And I stick it on the end of the of the body. That way I can do all sides. I don't have to wait for one side to dry. And I'll just stick that in the binder clip. It gets a little bit top heavy there. So I'll put another one here. And if you don't have any clips, then you can use a toothpick and a piece of styrofoam. And just shove a toothpick on the end and stick the other end in a piece of uh, styrofoam. We're just going to cover the whole body with the glue, place it over top. I'll put one on the back side as well so I can hang on to it for a second. And then you brush the glue over top the napkin or the paper towel, whatever you're using. And if you need to do this in two stages, don't be afraid to do it that way either. Um, a lot of times it's easier just to do what you can, let it dry and then come back and continue on. Oh, the one thing I should mention is if you have a three ply paper towel or nap can take one of the plies off. Just make your life a lot easier. Okay, all I have left now are the ears. I want to get inside as well because you want to paint inside the ear. All right, so once you got all the paper on there, then we have to let it dry. So now we're going to do his little arms. And these are still movable. I've done everything around there and underneath, but I've left the arm on purpose. So I can get a piece underneath there and then I'll wrap it upwards. But I'll just break this down a little bit further because I don't want it too large. Okay, and I'll cover the entire arm with the glue. And 
just make sure you have the glue on the entire surface of that paper. So when you're adding arms and legs or ears or anything like that, where it's been attached will, will be a little bit weak, right? You can pull it up and some of that tape will come off with it. So you just want to make sure when you put your paper towel on there that you've covered that large surface around the arm. So over the arm and then around it or the leg. And that way when the paper towel dries, it holds everything in together and they become one solid piece. So I'll just add another one over here. That way you've given the arm so much more stability all the way around and it's become part of the body. So now they're dry and ready for painting and I'm going to do brown on the body and then I'll do a light color on the face and underneath the face. And instead of choosing white, I'm going to use a parchment. It's kind of like a creamy color. You're going to be covering it with fur anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But you do want to use a color similar to the bristles or the yarn that you're using. Before we get started, I thought I'd give you some measurements. So from the back end to the tip of the nose, this one is an inch and a half long. And at the widest point, he's an inch wide. And about three quarters of an inch thick, the body. And the super tiny one is just an inch from the back end to the nose, about three quarters inch across, and he's just under half an inch thick. And an edit from the future because when I painted these guys, I painted them a little bit wrong. Easily correctable though. You can see this one has a white face. After I was looking at pictures on Google, I realized that their faces are darker in the front, like the nuzzle part or a darker color. And then all underneath is white and not all of them because you know, there's different colors here to work with as well. But this one still has the darker in the front there. And this uh, part is more of a tan color. I'm gonna be using more of like an off white, but you can see different colors of hedgehogs. So I'm using cinnamon brown for this part because I don't want it too dark. And I'm gonna soften it up with some fur. And his eyes go into the brown part as well. Alright guys, I'm just popping in with an edit because I just wanted to be clear that what I'm doing here, I'm cutting these in about a half an inch lengths and I didn't measure that out ever. It's just at the very end here because I've got two almost done. I did notice that I've always cut them in about a half an inch lengths. So the whole bundle itself is about an inch and a quarter long and I got two cuts out of them. So after the second cut, I'm always left with this little bit right here and I just toss those because it's a time saver really. Um, you could get the wire off of there I guess and cut the very ends off but it becomes a little bit of a time sucker so I've just been tossing those and using two cuts out of each bundle and you don't have to measure them. It worked out to about a half an inch each time. And it's important to start in the back and you work your way forward. And just stick the ends in the glue and don't worry we are going to trim these up after. I'll just straighten them out as best I can and now I'll do the second bundle. Okay, carefully I'm just going to add another bead just above that line and I'm working with a generous amount of glue. Okay, and I'll start in the center. These little bundles seem to be the perfect size as well. Okay, I'm just putting glue on the ends of this little bundle because there was a little bare spot there. And my fibers fell over so I want to get in there. There we go. 
I get that glue as close as I can to the layer underneath it. Again, starting in the center. Once you get a method going, it goes fairly quick. So I've let this sit for about a half an hour and I actually set the timer and let it sit and I think it's important to do sections like this because if I kept going I would risk knocking these ones out of out of shape so. and popping in from the future again just with a little tip as we're working on the bristles um, you do a little section then you let it dry and then you come back and you can keep going do another little section and leave it dry before you leave it dry for about a half an hour, leave them sit for about four or five minutes and check them out and make sure that all of those bristles are standing up. And one of these tools here and all works really well. And it doesn't take very long, like I said, four or five minutes to get those bristles to stand in the right direction before you leave them sit for about a half an hour. That's why it's important to use tacky glue. It's the best glue for this job because it grabs on so fast. And yeah, if you don't check on them and they do fall over, you'll end up with a little hole like I got here which is no big deal. I think he turned out great anyway. It's just uh, when you get to the painting part, that little hole is annoying. And yeah, so it doesn't take very long to make sure that they're all standing in the right direction. Then you can safely leave them sit for about a half an hour. It'll be a cool little project as long as you take those extra steps to ensure that all the bristles are standing in the right direction. Getting up behind the ears and stuff, it's harder to put the glue back there. You can see there's a little hole there. So I'll just put some on the ends as well and I'll help my bristles get enough glue on them. I did set it down for about five minutes before I, I let it dry for about a half an hour and then I came back after five minutes and I used this little tool here and I just picked up some of the bristles that had fallen over and that seems to have helped a lot as well. So this little tool here is quite helpful. I wasn't sure how this was going to turn out because it's supposed to be curling up this way and I'm not sure if I'm getting the exact look that I wanted but, but we'll keep trying here. Alright guys so I got the other couple of layers on in here and what I've been doing is kind of helping them push forward and the glue isn't totally set yet so it's actually working okay so I'm going to trim this last layer in here a little bit shorter than the layer before it so even though I didn't take very much off it's actually helping because it's forming the shape that I want. And when I trimmed up this layer, you can see I went a little bit shorter than the layer above it as well. And again, that helps form it the way I want it to go. So when we're working on these partially rolled ones, we have two points at which we start bristles. So the one point is here at the bottom of the bottom, and then we work up towards the belly. But then we also have the back of the head. So that's the second point where we start. So when we're done, we'll always have this little piece here that sits on the table. So this part is all done. And now I've just started the back of the head. So I got one row in. So my second row is going to go on top of that. And I thought we could do that together on video here. And this is the row where I'll always be adding glue to the end of the bristles. So I can kind of pull those back get these in there and if you let that first row dry like I've done and now it's dry enough where they're gonna stay in place the second row is so much easier because you can just slide these in and they stop where they're supposed to and I don't have to worry about knocking that row out this row down here I prefer putting the bristles into a bead of glue, but this will work because sliding them down kind of pushes the glue into all the ends. So I see that it's going to work out just fine. I probably could have left these sides a little bit longer so it would look more like a ball, but it's okay. I'm not going to put any bristles here because he's always going to be sitting in that position anyway, so there's no point in putting bristles there. And I was looking at his face and I can see that this 
is sitting a little bit too low for me. I think it would look so much cuter if he was looking up. So I'm just going to hot glue this little prosthetic, <laughs> foil prosthetic, into place. Okay, the hot glue was just to keep it um, in position while I get the tape on there. Because working in such a small area, it's going to be a little bit difficult. I'm so much happier with this nose now. I'm glad I followed my gut to fix that because that looks so cute. And I did raise the ear height as well. And here's the cute little guy that got his new nose. So I should have added in the video that when you fix something like that, you've added more foil and then more tape, the tape will not hold that in place. The tape is only to prepare it for the paper towel. The paper towel is what's going to hold that in place forever. So when you're gluing the paper towel in over top something that you've added, make sure that you overlap the seams. So when I put paper towel in there, I went all the way around that face. So once the paper towel is dry, everything becomes one solid piece. Okay, so now we're going to work on the face and the belly. And I'm going to do it with this guy here. I had filmed all of these ones previously, but I did a couple things backwards. So this is my chance to do it all in the right order for you. And I'm going to be using tacky glue. I'm going to do belly fur, muzzle fur, and around his eyes. And all of that's going to be attached with tacky glue. Okay, so for the belly fur, I'm going to choose this off-weight color. And you can use yarn too, guys. I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. So we could do actual strands or we can make a uh, flocking. And I think what I'll do is make a flocking. So I'm going to cut this close to the backing. Actually, that's pretty fine and powdery on its own. So I'm just going to attach it this way. Okay, and I don't want globs of glue, but I want an even layer of glue. So I'll just spread it all around evenly wherever I'm going to put that fur. I'm not putting any on the, on the arms. I'm going to use this brush to get it pushed in there. And you really want to push it into the glue. So you can see I used the same fur on this guy, but I didn't cut it off that way. What I did was hold on to it, cut as close as I could to the backing, and then hold it all together. And then I put a bead of tacky glue down and then I laid it on top of that bead of glue. And then I layered it. And you always start at the back and work your way up. So I laid that down and then a bead of glue on top of that, another layer of fur, and then keep going until it's all covered in. And if you were wanting to use yarn, if you didn't have any fur on hand, just cut off a few strands. You just cut little bits like this. So both these guys here have the same fur. That's that fur right there on the muzzle. This one was left as is, and then this little guy, I did paint over it. We'll see how this guy looks. And when you're using flocking or fur or yarn, you just want to make sure that you really push it into that glue. I ended up covering his ears as well, and I used the yarn flocking that I made. So you just want to go around and brush off the excess once the glue is completely dry. So I always leave things sit for about a half an hour. Okay, now I'm going to add some white fur all the way around his muzzle. And I think this time I'll do it kind of like this, where I'll do long strands instead of flocking. So I'm going to hold it all together and place it on and just push it into the glue. In the previous clip you saw me working on the bigger guy and here's the little guy I made out of chip brushes and because he is so tiny I had to put them together slightly different than I did the bigger guy so I've included that all in the video and you'll get to see his tiny little arms and his legs before we added the fur and just to note when I did start off with his belly I was going with pink fur and then I later changed my mind and went with white fur
and I'm going to put the fur on his belly first before I do any spikes. Yeah, I thought it would be a lot easier to do his belly this time first. All right, I'm gonna leave him dry for a bit. I'll come back, we'll brush him off and <laughs> see what's left underneath there. And I used my little tool here to get underneath the chin, get around those arms. I also made some indents on the feet with my tool. Alright guys, we're in the next day. And this guy is looking pretty cute already. I'm falling in love with him. <laughs> I like his little hands and feet there. Working those lines in there really made a huge difference. I just love that. I'll probably touch up the color a little bit when I'm done, but they're looking so cute. The bristles, um, I did the exact same thing I did with the big guy there. So I just, you know, kind of formed them all up with my finger before the glue completely set and made sure they're all standing in the right direction. And the only difference I find working with these bristles than the shoe brush is these ones are not pre-bundled. So you have to separate them and then cut them. But once you get a, a rhythm going, it goes pretty quick. You'll know just how much to cut off. So I'm just going to trim those up. And obviously it's easier to get them in when they're longer as well and then trim them up. I know it would save a lot of bristles if we could just stick them in shorter but it's easier on us to put them in longer. Do what we have to do and then trim them up. That wasn't the final trim. That was just to make them a little bit shorter so they were less heavy. And also, sometimes, depending on where I was on the body, it would be easier for me to get the next layer on with the layer before it a little bit shorter. So you don't want to trim them down too short until all the bristles are in place and they are dry. And then you can go ahead and trim them down and shape them as you're trimming. Uh, by the time I got to this guy, I was pretty confident with what I wanted, so I was trimming him up as I went. So these ones didn't get trimmed until the very end. But these two partially rolled ones, it was just easier for me to trim them as I went. And then again, after the bristles were dry, I went ahead and trimmed them one more time. Eyes. Now we're going to add the eyes. And two of these guys have pins for eyes. And then the smallest one over there has painted eyes. And I'm going to show you how to do both ways. The pins that I'm using are one inch in length. And the heads of them are really tiny. I couldn't tell you where they're originally bought because I inherited them with my grandmother's sewing box. And they're the perfect size for these little guys. I'm sure you can get them in any place where they sell sewing supplies. Um, if you have some on hand in the wrong color, you can always paint them. I just use acrylic paints to paint pins. Uh, these are the right color, so all I have to do is just trim them down with my pliers. So I take off about a half an inch or so. Yeah, right there. And if you put the hole in the wrong spot, don't worry, you can always fill it with the flocking and start over. And don't push the all in all the way because you want the pin to kind of you know, have to be forced in. You don't want it to be loose in there. You can also paint the eyes in, guys. Just put a hole with your awl. Make sure there's no fibers on your awl and then just dip it into the paint. And then put the awl right into that hole and spin it around. I absolutely love them. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> he needs a nose. If you have any fibers sticking up around your nose, just be sure to clip them away. And you can use any color for the nose. I'm just going to stick with black here. And the other thing we can do is use something thin pin or an awl. I toned down those pink arms a little bit with burnt sienna and that was just taking a very minute amount on my brush and just kind of like dry brushing it on there and I rubbed it in with my finger as well. And I had just put varathane, just a very tiny amount with a little brush over his nose and some on his arms to make it look a little bit more alive. And now I'm using a pin. I'm going to make little lines for his hands. 
And this little guy here got all the same treatment as this big guy. He's not done. I'm still working on him. I'm adding some yarn in around the side. So this side is done. I have to do this side yet. And I've been doing that by taking a, a short strand of white yarn, taking a very small section, using my pointy tool, just spread open the one end, putting glue on the other end, and then sticking it where I want it there, and then use a tool to get it right where you want it. You can also put glue inside and then put the yarn on top of that. And remember when I was working on him in the beginning and he was still in the foil stage and he looked like a chair and I took the top of the chair and I pulled it down so I could add in a face and add in arms and legs and everything. And now that he is done, I want to squish him back up into a ball and I've already done it. I had to wait till all of these were dry completely. So you don't want to have any glue showing there. You want to make sure it's completely dry otherwise you'll push all your bristles out of shape, but now that those are dry, I just took my thumb and my finger on the very ends of him and just squished. <laughs> He's so adorable. I think I'm going to call him Squishy. And if the material was completely set, like all the glue was completely set a week from now, probably wouldn't be able to do that as easy. So you want to do it pretty quick, but after all of these are dry, of course. Alright guys, we're almost there. In the next clip we're going to be trimming up one of these guys here and then give him some spots. We'll come on back. We'll work a little bit on his spots. I've added some but I'm going to add some more and I'm going to do them slightly different. So yeah, let's get started. Easier to work with. So this guy has been trimmed already. You can obviously leave him as is but I prefer to trim him up. So I'll start at the side here at the bottom and I'll work around to the back. The best rule to follow is cut little bits at a time. Like you don't want to go in there and just start hacking away. Just cut little bits at a time because you can always trim more but if you trim off too much then you can't put it back right so you can see I've left this a little bit longer than I did the first time and especially the top it's got a little bit of a cool look up here this guy's more shorter you can just play around with the looks that you're you're wanting but, um, yeah, this guy's got the cooler hair, so we'll call him Elvis. <laughs> Elvis has the cool haircut. All right, I'm going to use that parchment again. You can use cream, white, any light color will do. And a fine tip paintbrush. I'm just going to dot them on just randomly. So on these lighter color hedgehogs, they don't actually don't have white like those ones do on the very tip. They have brown just underneath the tip. So what I've been doing is adding white tips and then putting brown just underneath that. So I'm going to borrow the all from Radagast. I'll dip my all into the brown there. I go on the side. And so instead of tapping the brown on top, I'm just going underneath the white. Once I got going on this guy with the dots, I ended up just stabbing in the brown. So instead of swiping, as I showed you, I started stabbing it, and it went a lot faster. So just stabbing just below the tip of the bristle. I was getting a lot more coverage that way as well. I think they turned out absolutely wonderful, and I really love the fact that we can make them more realistic looking, or more cartoony looking, depending on the look that we're going for. So the whole reason why I made these hedgehogs to begin with was for my miniature Radagast the Brown. If you don't recognize that name, he's the eccentric old wizard from The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. I made him on video, so if you're interested in making something similar, there's a video available for you. And you can also read the story of why I made him, and that link is in the pinned comment below. And I have a lot more videos coming for you guys, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification so you'll know the next time I do upload a video. And until next time...